My name is Vahid Chitsas, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you so very much. Well, this is Adam Stavis, and I'm here in Toronto in Canada. And I am a professional development coach for individuals trying to advance their career and their professional life. Awesome. So let's talk about this. There's two sides to success. The shitty side, the side that nobody wants to talk about, where you almost have to file for bankruptcy, where you get a lot of no's from people, you get punches, competitors want to put you out every day, uh, things don't work out, you constantly need to put fires out. Um, one after another, disasters, just not cool stuff that you don't want to... Emotionally, you know, it's one of those things. This is what I think success is. They'll take your face, they'll go on concrete, they'll, they'll, they'll go like, and now you'll bleed, and then they'll put some salt on it, and then they go again. So you got to go do that a couple of times, and then finally you become successful, and everybody wants to know how you did it. But you don't talk about all the bullets and the uh, the... the the, all of the damages that was done. So let's talk about both sides. What does it take to go from this side to that side? And is it necessary to go through that based on your experience? Right, right. So, I mean, there's a lot that it takes to be able to make the money that you want to be making in life if we're, if we're to talk about that specifically, because I know that the culture that we live in um, glorifies making money and and makes it really important uh, and makes it a, a common goal in terms of understanding a level of success. If you make this amount of money, you're considered to be successful. If you don't make that much money, you're not considered to be successful when it comes to, you know, your professional career and that sort of thing. Uh, and, and that's fine. I, I can respect that and I get it. So for those of us that are trying to build a certain lifestyle for ourselves, uh, of course, it can be very challenging to know where to go to, uh, who to talk to, who to believe. Uh, there's information overload in this day and age, and it's hard to be able to filter uh, and know who's telling the truth and who's not. So a lot of it has to be some trial and error and experimentation to understand what your capabilities are and the willingness to make mistakes and to uh, fall down. I, I sort of always use the analogy like um, if a baby that could learn how to walk, a baby's learning how to walk and it could speak, what would it say? It would probably say, you know, I don't understand what to do. I don't, uh, my legs keep crumbling from underneath me and I can't hold myself up. And this is really frustrating and it hurts my bum every single time I fall on it. And what, what do I do? How can I walk? I see you can run across the room and, and I don't get it. What do I have to do? So what you would probably say is, well, you just have to keep trying. You just, you know, you're going to hurt yourself and that's part of the process and it's kind of necessary and we've all been through it. And, you know, I can hold your hand a little bit and, and help you, but ultimately, at some point, you're going to have to walk by yourself. So some mentorship is important, of course, some holding the hand and laying out obstacles to kind of grab onto and, and encouraging the baby to walk and that sort of thing is important. But at some point, you have to allow the baby to fall down on its bum and to try and hold itself up by itself and you have to do the same with yourself you have to allow yourself to find mentors to uh, find the right mentors and know how to do that uh, and even fail at doing that sometimes and you have to allow yourself to hurt yourself a little bit uh, and overcome the um, primitive side of our brain that wants to be scared of everything I agree with that 100%. And thank God that babies can't talk when they're about to walk. So, or else we'll be hearing about it a lot, right? Yeah. My daughter is about to do that. She's been doing that for a month. So I, I, I get exactly that analogy. But you want to know something? You can, I feel like as, as parents, maybe you can incentivize them wanting to walk. But we don't have that in business. So our goals and our vision, and I feel like our vision board maybe should incentivize us to get to that. And I think that's very, very important for a lot of entrepreneurs 
from the successful ones that I hear is that they've always had their goals right in front of them. So whenever things don't go right, that's the, that's the one key element that they got to turn into to be able to get that feeling back again where they can keep going. Or other than that, it would just be very tough. It's just, you know, that's what it is. So here's my question. You said holding hands and, and some obstacles that they could grab on. What, so what is the definition between a teacher and a coach? Right. Okay. So now somebody who's, in, in my viewpoint, I mean, just in my opinion, somebody who uh, coaches successfully can also does teach. But somebody who teaches might show you a few concepts or might – uh, give you sort of a basis of understanding of how some things work. Uh, but somebody who coaches will provide you the ability to get to the knowledge yourself. There's some, you know, but that coach, mean the coach is going to do it for you, right? Yeah. The coach will not do it for you, but the coach will inspire you or will motivate you or will be hard and tough on you when they, when you need it. Um, but also will lift you up when you also need that as well. So, uh, coaching is also teaching, but just being a teacher all on its own is not quite enough. Definitely not. Yeah. Definitely. So here's my question. Yeah. Why do you need a coach? Because what you just talked about, okay, can I get inspiration and accountability from YouTube? Why do I need to hire a coach? Well, you don't really get accountability so much from YouTube. It's a great question, really, really good question. But there's no real necessarily accountability from YouTube or from looking at instructional videos on stuff. Accountability comes from somebody sitting with you one-on-one uh, -on -one and really making sure that you've done the things that you said that you're going to do. And then if you haven't, then um, make sure that they let you know that there are some obvious repercussions for not doing so, such as wasting your own time and your own energy and your own money and, 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 and energy and mind capital from not achieving the things that you intend to in the time that you intend to achieve them. So, uh, yeah, having a coach there is really important. And not only that, but, you know, if you don't have – it's, it's kind of interesting, I find – that when you're a child, when you're a real, when you're a baby, you automatically have mentorship. I mean, hopefully, anyways. I mean, I know there are some circumstances that are extenuating and extreme, but for the most part, uh, I believe that all of us have had mentors as babies and as little children. But for whatever reason, we get to a, an age where we start to believe, I could figure it all for myself. I could do it all by myself. I don't need anybody to tell me what to do and how to do it. And I, and sure, you can. You certainly could figure out some things on your own and possibly even try to figure out everything by yourself if you wanted to. But if you could just ask somebody how to do something and they can tell you right away, rather than you waiting 10 years to figure it out, wouldn't you want to do that? I mean, it just seems obvious, right? Like, so some people will come to me and they'll ask me, like, how do I go from building this idea that I have for this service or product and be able to make some money from it? Like, how do I go from being able to make nothing to being able to make, let's say, like $100,000 a year? And I've never built a business before, and I have no track record, and I have no clue what I'm doing. Okay, that's fine. And I appreciate you asking me that. So the first step is, well, be able to make $1 from it. Be able to make one, if you can't even make one dollar, then how are you going to make a hundred thousand of them, right? And then from one dollar, you can then try to figure out how to make two dollars. And from two, you can try to make how to make four dollars and eight and so on. Gradually, you'll get there. But, and you could try to figure out how to do that exactly all on your own. Or you could find somebody who's already done it. Like, let's say I want to build a landscaping business for just hypothetical example. So when you have no landscaping experience, you don't understand how to build a business, you don't understand the service, you're not very good with people, all these sorts of things. But you, and you're willing to be able to grow and do that stuff and get the knowledge. So one of the best things you can do is find a mentor. Find somebody who knows landscaping. You can either work for them directly or maybe you know like a friend of a friend. You can ask them a few questions and get to understand what are the things that they did to build their business. You know, and then that way you can kind of leapfrog yourself to get to the point where you can build a successful business. For pretty simple, right? This is, I think, stuff that's a no-brainer. But unfortunately, people don't 
do that. We, we tend to have our egos telling us that we are just going to try to achieve everything by ourselves. And, you know, I've learned that that is just not the best way in terms of being able to do things quickly. You know, our time is so valuable. Our time is so valuable. You can never, this second that I'm spending with you right now, I will never get back. Never. And that's the difference because money you can get back. Time you can't get back. Exactly. I can always make more money. You know, I remember there was a, a circumstance, I'm not going to talk about it in too much depth, but there's a, a horrible circumstance that happened to me uh, where I lost uh, $80,000. Not lost in terms of like I left it somewhere, but um, I was in a partnership and that partnership dissolved and I didn't take the time to really understand who that person really was and it cost me $80,000 and I didn't have $80,000. In fact, I was already suffering tremendously suffering. I had very little money. I was already in debt and I have a mortgage to pay and I got food that I need to pay for, like basic requirements to live. And here I am having to pay 80 grand and come up with it just like this. Now, was I worried? Sure. Of course. Was I stressed? Absolutely. Was I like unsure how I'm going to figure this out, this huge overwhelming problem? Yes. But at the same time, I had faith that somehow I will figure out a path. And also that even though I owe $80,000, the type of money that I'm looking to make, that's chump change. That's chump change. It's nothing. And the grand scheme of things, $80,000 does not even affect me over the course of my whole life. But the time and stress that I cost myself, I will never get back. So then I have a choice to make. Am I going to cause myself a lot of stress and worry and concern? Or am I going to surround myself in an environment with people who are going to be very supportive and that are going to help guide me and provide me the type of experience in life that I don't have to feel so stressed out about. And luckily I was able to do that. And that's one of the key elements that I teach people is that you are who you surround yourself with. You are who you surround. If you surround yourself with people who are criminals, even though you're not conducting any criminal activity yourself, you're probably going to get into some deep trouble. But uh, if you surround yourself with highly intelligent people who make a lot of money and that want to achieve huge things in their life and are highly motivated and ambitious, chances are you're going to be that way yourself. So that's one of the best ways to achieve anything you want in life. Just surround yourself with the best people you possibly can. I agree with that 100%. And sometimes, I don't know, it's, it's easier than what a lot of people make it to be. I think we make shit complicated. Mm -hmm. You getting into the sphere of successful people should not be that difficult with this day and age of technology and social media. You literally got to find a way. You message 10, 15 people, and I'm pretty sure there are some type of a service, some type of an exchange that you could do where you could close your proximity little by little. It may not happen overnight. You can't message somebody and the next day you're at their mansion, you know, at their party with all the millionaires. You shouldn't expect like that. But if your intention is there and you set the right path, you might get there six months. But at least in six months, you change your surroundings. So I definitely agree with that 100%. But imagine, I don't know, imagine everybody took that advice and did it. Most people are too scared. You know, most people are very, there's this very primitive side of our brain that has not developed fully enough yet to get past, which is that part that when we used to live as cavemen and cave women, where we were having to be scared and negative on a constant basis because that helped us survive and live longer because who knows, maybe a lion's going to come and eat us. But nowadays, nowadays, those types of dangers just don't, exist. We live in absolute comfort. If you really, at least in Western society, we live in some amazing comforts. And if you're not taking advantage of that, then you are seriously missing out on life's opportunities. If you're always living in a state of being scared of what can get you and how much money you might lose at and how, much, and how much energy you might lose and how you might make a mistake and all these things that you might make yourself anxious about. I mean, you're really losing out on life's opportunities. There's no need for it at all. You know, make part of growing is making mistakes and you've only really failed if you quit. You've only really failed if you've quit, if you stopped yeah, trying. It's a defeat. Napoleon Hill talks about it in the book, Thinking Grow Rich. 
it's temporary defeat and perhaps some failure down the line, but predominantly most of the stuff that we encounter are temporary defeat. It's not, it's not. Listen, right now our healthcare system is going through temporary defeat. As long as we don't give up, we will find a vaccine. We will find a solution. We will survive. So it's just, uh, that's just the way, I mean, I don't know, to me. But here's the question, though. If you were given this opportunity to surround yourself with the people that you want, whether that's success or whatever, then if you hang out with criminals, then you have said something very loud about yourself. Now you have, now you have, now you have a stand. Now you mm -hmm. said to the universe that I do want to associate with these type of people. I think if people realize that, that, you know, imagine you had a label on your forehead that said, yeah, you know, I'm hanging out with criminals. I'm hanging right. out with negative people. Would you right. still do it? Would you still right. go and hang out with those? Like I hang out with five negative people today. I think that that would be, I don't know, that would be a cool experiment to do. I don't know if you have the, I don't know if our society will have that experiment. I don't know, maybe an isolated school, finding yeah. out like 50, you know, students go and hang out. But whoever you hang out with, we're going to label you and we're going to make a t-shirt that says you have take this stand. And then we'll see if they will do that because, you know, some people do the criminal activities, but they hang out with good people and they hide that. Right. Well, I think it's also a lot of times people um, do things that they know they shouldn't be doing because they have a limited belief system. They think that they're just destined to be in a certain environment and um, be uh, succumb to certain circumstances. So and I don't I don't like having a limited belief system is definitely a massive cognitive bias that shouldn't you shouldn't allow yourself to have to succumb to that mindset at all you know we are capable very very capable of doing really anything that we put our minds to now i know certain circumstances again are extreme and i don't want to oversimplify things i know that there are some people that are just in bad situations and there's just not too much they can do about it uh they just have to kind of you know figure out a way through it the best the way they can but a lot of us i've learned through working with a lot listen i've worked with over 2000 people over 2000 people within the last 17 years that i've been doing this um, from all different age groups demographics levels of success belief systems everything and there's definitely a commonality uh between people that struggle uh, a general commonality which is that they believe that that's just something that they, they, they just kind of have to live in the struggle rather than being able to live through the struggle. They just believe that it's part of life. So, and a lot of it, again, comes down to exactly what you're saying, you know, who you're hanging out with, who you're spending time with. If, if you're, and it doesn't matter who, it could be your family. I know that family is very important to a lot of people, but, you know, you don't choose your family. They're chosen for you. And they may not be awesome people. They may not be the best people to be spending time with. Maybe. So, and they may but be listen, you brought up a good answer. point. If you live in Minnesota and four months out of the year snows and you got a business that you want to do 12 months out of the year in California, to me it's like, you're, you're, you're a nice guy. I like you. But we're not going to get along that good. I don't give excuses and I don't take excuses. Okay. I told that person literally flat out. Pick up your shit, sell everything you got, move to California. You're not a tree, you can move. So you want the solution, I give you the solution. But the solution may not be something that you like. But mm. which one is more important, your future or your temporary feelings? So what? Your family is in Minnesota. You go back every month, you make enough money, you go back every month for one weekend, you spend time with your family, and then you get your butt back. That's three days. That leaves you 27 days of yeah. working. Work. So to me, it's like, as a human being, a lot of times we give bullshit excuses that when you talk to the elite, they will never give you those excuses. And that's how you succumb those temporary defeats, by you not making excuses and not entitlement mentality. If your mm -hmm. mom and your dad love you so much and they care and give a shit about your future, maybe they'll move to California with you too. But if they Maybe. don't, they get to live in Minnesota and then you move for your future. Because there will be a time where your mom and dad are not living on this planet and you still have to wake up that morning 
and still go to work. So you're still going to be miserable if you're in Minnesota. And I'm just using Minnesota as an example because I yeah, know yeah, it's yeah. Be crazy. It could be yeah. in Toronto and Canada. Yeah, in Canada. So, I mean, you're not a tree. Pick up your shit and just move. So people, when they give that excuse, I'm like, okay. So as a personal development side, you haven't figured out what is it that you want because if that was big enough, then you wouldn't be giving these small excuses. And that could be temporary. It could be literally you come to California for five, 10 years, you build your business, you get the passive, you get the business going, and then you go move back to your family over there, but you're making money from California, but you live in Minnesota. You could do that if you wanted to. But when people give those excuses, I don't know. I ain't buying it. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's, you got to really understand what's going to make you happy. And, you know, you might believe that it's going to make you happy, like the grass is greener on the other side kind of saying, right? So you might believe it's going to make you happy for this example to move to California. And then you discover that it doesn't make you so happy. Well, so then, back. yeah, so you go back or you might have to ask yourself some more profound questions like, you know, am I searching from outside myself to find happiness? Do I have to find happiness from within myself first? Um, not only that, but... Um, if you have a goal in mind, like let's say the goal is really I want to build a business in California because the business I have will do more will do more business in California based upon the the demographic and this and that. So okay, fine. So you have to decide. Like it's a balancing option, right? Do you go ahead and there's sacrifices with everything, right? So do but you? I don't believe a it's a sacrifice. I believe it is a choice. We don't sacrifice anything. Maybe back in the days in the ancient time, we were sacrificing shit for this, the belief system that we had or the brainwashing that we got, right? I look at it as it's a choice. I am choosing to move and do this because I want X, Y, Z. It's not right. a sacrifice. I am not right. sacrificing. Listen, to me, do you physically need to be next to your mom to feel the love? That's a question to me. Yeah, if do you, you do, then that... Yeah, then you that's that's a whole other issue in itself. You know what I'm saying? Like so so you have to clarify and the only way clarification you get is if you have a coach and the coach is not letting you come up with, you know, excuses that you might just come up randomly and your friends might take your excuses or your friends might actually help you come up with those excuses. Give you that guilt trip of oh you're gonna leave us behind, you're gonna leave your family. Yeah, I am. Because my goals are my goals, and I need to go over there and achieve them over there. So to me, yeah. it's like, it doesn't, anyway. Yeah, and you'll make new friends. How do people find you? Okay, uh, so they can find me directly through Instagram. Uh, my name should be here, I believe, the, the link for my name. You can find me directly on there. And also, you can get a free coaching session one-on-one -on -one with me through Zoom or Skype if you just direct message me. And you can also look me up on Google, uh, Adam Stavis, A-D-A-M-S-T-A-V-I-S-S. -S. Uh, you can look me up and you'll easily be, be able to find tons of information on me. So absolutely, yeah. It'd be great Definitely. to be able to help as many people as possible. Awesome. I want to thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule being with us. Hopefully looking forward to do more. And maybe I, I sign up for one of those sessions so I get rid of some of my limiting beliefs. How's that? Sure, Absolutely. It'd be a pleasure. It'd be an absolute pleasure. Thank you, you very much. It, Stay safe in Canada, brother. Stay safe. Thank you. You too. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.